Hi, welcome to Wiser Tech Tips. I'm Jim Chrisman, and I'm here with a uh, nurse from our Shadyside Center, Nicolette Menini. Hello. Hi, Nicolette. How are you? Hi, Jim. Just fine today. Good. Um, what this session is going to be about are some inexpensive ways that you can repurpose or upgrade your simulation center, the classroom, which we're standing in now, uh, your simulation room, and your control room. Um, we had the privilege to come in uh, to the Shady Side Center here uh, with Nicolette, and we upgraded the control room and the simulation room already. And Nicolette has asked us to come back and take a look at some things we can do in the classroom. So Nicolette, what did you have in mind? First, why don't you tell us more about the center? Sure, so this is the nursing education department and um, it's a very busy classroom and sim room. Um, we are probably in here four to five days a week. Um, we needed to keep the multifunctionality of our space, a standard classroom at times, a simulation room that can serve as a conference room sometimes, and then the ability to expand both the classroom into the sim space and the sim space into the classroom. Um, we also wanted to get into some technology that will allow us to do more advanced technology teaching, to participate more in some web-based learning, and actually to connect with people with um, video conference calling. Okay, we can help you with that. Thank you. What can we help you with in the classroom, Nicolette? I'm glad you asked, Jim. I have four things on my list. Okay. First, sometimes I have a large class here and we're using simulation as part of teaching. And I could take the group back there to do simulation, but then the people in this classroom are all turning their desk around to see what's happening. I okay. need a way to show them what's happening in the simulation room without disrupting the rest of the class. Okay. What else do you have? The other way around. So you want the people that are there to be able to see what's going on in the right. classroom. Right. Sometimes I, my, again, large place, a lot of classes, when I've outgrown my conventional classroom, I then have people in my simulation oh, so you have theater. overflow. I have overflow, okay. yes. Okay. So I need a way to utilize, they can't see this screen. I need a way to show them what's on the screen in the back there. Okay. And anything else? You said that you had four. I had four. Oh, we teach a lot of hemodynamics in our critical care course. Mm -hmm. And right now, I don't have a way to show them anything dynamic. I have static EKGs. I have static blood pressures. And I know our SIM software has dynamic hemodynamics. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to show some dynamic hemodynamics and do case studies with that. Okay. And one more. Number four. We're in that 5S cleanup mode. Look at my corner. Okay. Can you help make this look better? Absolutely. Um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that last. We'll hit the other ones first, but we can get this modified to look more like a podium and get rid of the desk and give an instructor some place to sit up. And we'll talk about the speakers too. So your first two things are sort of related. Um, basically what you want to be able to do is see on this screen up front what's actually going on back in your simulation room and yes. also be able to show what they might be seeing on the screens in the simulation room up here your hemodynamics that sort of stuff yes um, there are a lot of ways that we can do that i think probably the most cost effective way uh, is with a program sort of a remote control program um, there are a lot of them out there we use a program called any place control but uh, team viewer is another good example of, of something like that it's installed on both computers. It's a one-to-one -one connection. And you're actually able, for instance, if you're logged into this computer running any place control from this computer, you can control that computer in the back. Or you can just view what's on the screen, in which case we can put it up here with no problem. And it will work the same way from the back. If you're back there, you can have that computer connected to the computer up here in your classroom and show exactly to the students back there. Now back there you have a big screen TV because that's a smaller room, right? Yes. Okay. So on the TV they would see what's here on the screen and vice versa. So that's not a problem. Okay. Okay, the hemodynamic portion, I know from looking at, at your computer mm -hmm. before, we would need to do something different with the setup. What I would recommend for you is this StarTech 4x4 video matrix switcher. Basically, I'll show you the back first. You have four connections input, four connections as output, and it also can do sound. 
Uh, we don't typically do it as sound, we just do use the video portion. The nice thing about this is that by clicking on say, video output two, I want to show video input three, you can display any one of the four inputs on any one of the four outputs or on all of the outputs. You can do any combination you need to do. If I hear you right, if I come into class with my Mac computer, can I use it with this? Yeah, we would need to have another way to get in here. You would need to have a dongle for your Mac that would go to a VGA because these are all VGA connections in the back. And then we would just have a VGA cable coming off of this. You would choose, say, you know, Mac will say is four and you want to show it here on your uh, big screen and that would be one. So you would do simply four, or I'm sorry, I want to show on one Okay. input four. Okay. Okay. So we can get that set up for you. Um, and looking at this, I think what we can do, you know, looking at all the equipment that you have in here, the first thing I would recommend is that we get the speakers off the side of the podium and maybe try to get them up mounted either on the walls or, um, you know, stands or something that we get them up in the front of the room, separate it out, give you a little bit more space back here. We'll get all of this moved over here. We can actually ask the maintenance department to create a larger top for the podium that would allow you to support that. Um, and then we can go down through all of the components here, weed out the things that you don't use anymore or, you know, are old and outdated move the computer down in there and we'll put that four by four switcher in there as well so that whoever is up here teaching has a nice podium their view here we can even put two computers up there so that you can see the extended desktop so if you're doing PowerPoint you can look at your notes on one screen while you have the PowerPoint presentation up here that's great that's something all my instructors have been asking for too okay no well, we can handle that no problem um, We'll just go ahead and get started then. Thanks, Jim. Sure. And here we are in the simulation half of the multi-purpose room that you saw from the classroom. What I wanted to show you here is this is just a uh, straight uh, analog camera that we got from monoprice.com. It runs about $130. And there's a very nice connector in the back of it that allows you to transfer data across an ethernet cable rather than having to run separate cables for power and video and everything. It handles everything. Uh, when we redid this room, we were, you know, because it's a very old building, we were very nervous about what we might find in the ceiling and the walls. So we chose to go with channeling. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of channeling, but uh, it fits the purpose and we didn't have to worry about anything that might be up there. Um, and the channeling actually goes around and enters the wall over there into the control room. Okay, and here we are in the control room. As you can see, we have our AVS system here. Down here, we have the amplifier that's feeding the simulation room uh, speakers. We've mounted the monitors up here on the wall so that they're up off the surface and gives us more room. Uh, the main things that I want to show here is the controller for the pan tilt zoom cameras. Uh, being that they're analog, we had to run the cables through the conduit that you've already seen in the simulation room, through the wall and into here. And we're also using the same four x four video switcher that we're using in the classroom. Hi folks, we were hoping to show you the finished podium, but time constraints have gotten us so, we're here at Wiser in our classroom and we're going to show you our podium. It's basically the same design. Uh, Nicolette was going to have the top of her podium made a little bit larger than ours, but it's basically the same thing. So you can see, uh, just like over at our Shady Side Center, you have the underside, which is basically a stereo cabinet. We've got an amp in our computer. Here's our 4x4 switcher that we talked about, our mixer, and this is wireless sound. All of that's built in and goes through the mixer. On top, they have a wooden podium top, so you can put two monitors up here. 
through your PowerPoint here with your PowerPoint notes over here and show either one of those up on the screen, which is over here to my left. We'll also have a microphone built in here as well. So that's essentially what the podium is going to look like. Now the whole point to this video was so that we could show you some inexpensive ways to improve your simulation center. Uh, hopefully to give you an idea that it's safe to go out there on the internet and find things and bring them in. Uh, at the end of the video, we're going to show you a bunch of links with the items that we've talked about. But there is one more thing I wanted to talk to you about before we get to that point, and that is Wiser's very lucky. We're large enough and busy enough that we have me uh, on staff IT. A lot of centers don't have that. And I would encourage you folks to get to know that your IT guys, wh whoever is serving your needs. Uh, invite them over for breakfast. I don't know anybody in IT who doesn't appreciate food. Get the managers, get the employees over, show them around your center, impress them with the technology that you have coming in. Try to get the same IT guy coming back time after time when you need service. They're gonna be a really valuable asset to you. You just need to find a way to get them interested and involved so that they can help you with things like this, especially if you're someone who is not very IT savvy and you need that extra help. So with that, I'm gonna end. I hope that this has been a helpful and instructive video for you. Uh, stay tuned for the links and images of the items that we looked at. Thanks, have a good day.